What's up everybody and welcome back to another David Maxwell Golf video where today I have an exciting video for any Rapsodo MLM2 Pro user or somebody who's thinking about buying the MLM2 Pro for Christmas. By the way, if you are thinking about buying an indoor golf simulator for Christmas, make sure you check out 24-7 Golf. Use my promo code DMAX200 for the MLM2 Pro. They've got indoor setups, they've got outdoor setups, they've got path three enclosures like this with full projector packages and everything. You name it, it's got you covered. Check out 24-7 Golf. That's gonna be linked in the description. Again, don't forget to use my code DMAX200 to save yourself a couple of hundred bucks off. But Rapsodo have now released a very, very exciting update. And I think an update that all of us who use the MLM2 Pro were just waiting and waiting and waiting to receive. Now, I did first see this app through Golficity. If you haven't checked out the Golficity guys or the video on the Rapsodo where they got to test the beta version of this, make sure you check it out. But there's some things also that I use the Rapsodo for that I reckon we can do in the range and also on course. So we're gonna go through all of that. The three main things that they've done is they've updated it and they've been able to finally put landscape mode in the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. They've also added a much better range, thank God for that, because the range on the previous version before this update was horrible. And not only that, in the range, there's a whole bunch of new features, which are really cool, that I'm gonna be able to show you guys as well. Then the course play, they've added elevation in the course play to a number of different courses. I did check my home course and it still seemed to look pretty flat. We're gonna run through that as well, but I'm gonna show you both of them so you get to see. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna give you how I set this up because the setup options are also a little bit different now, but I'm gonna run through that and show you how it's done. Right, so I'm opening the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro app and it's still gonna open in portrait mode, not landscape mode, but you can now flip it. You can now, no, you can't flip it. I'm gonna go into my profile and what I mentioned before about the trial, let's check that. So I'm gonna go into premium trial. Your, pro, your trial membership will renew on the 31st of March 2024. Now I was a pretty early adopter of the MLM2 Pro, so I've got about three months to be able to use this before I have to renew my membership, which to be honest is pretty good leeway time to be able to test out the new updates of the apps and decide if I actually want to pay for the annual subscription or not. Right, so I'm going to connect MLM2 Pro. To get the most out of this, you're going to have to establish the direct connection, uh, sorry, the, the Wi-Fi connection. Now whether you do that through tethering a phone or whether you do that through actually using your Wi-Fi, um, you're gonna to need to do it. So I'm gonna establish a Wi-Fi connection. So it's now searching for the Wi-Fi. It's gonna ask me for my Wi-Fi options. Connection successful view device info. All right, so now what it's gonna ask me to do here is it's gonna ask me whether I want to connect to my local network or my iPhone. I'm gonna ask it to connect to my iPhone on this local network. So change MLM2 Pro connection, establish a lo local network connection. Sorry, I probably should have done this before, but I thought I did. Anyway, I mustn't have, must have been taking notice enough. Finalizing the connection, connection successful. Okay, start a session. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the simulation, we're gonna to go to the Rapsodo range, and then we're gonna do that as normal. So it's gonna ask me whether I wanna use, uh, we're hitting into a net here or, or an enclosure. Um, the Callaway Ball RPT graphics, I always want them in high quality. Continue, continue without a target. So this is one of the new things that you can do. I actually want to set the target distance and I'm gonna start with a pitching wedge. So I'm gonna set my pitching wedge at around about 116 meters. So about 116 meters, done. And I don't have Callaways anymore, but either way. So I'm gonna throw this up here. I'm gonna superimpose it on the screen. It's gonna ask me to set up a ball. This ball still somehow works, but if it doesn't, I have a backup and my backup is going to be uh, a Rapsodo ball dots ball, but either way. So I got the ball there. We're gonna set that in the right spot. I'm gonna to hit to continue. I can see my target line is in between this middle line here and also that window pane line. So we're gonna continue there. You now have a couple of different options in this app. So you've got the first club, which I'm gonna be hitting. If you select that, I'm guessing that it's gonna show you each club that you've hit. So if you hit a pitching wedge, a nine iron, a seven iron, etc., You can then swipe across and it's gonna give you how many targets you've hit, how many total shots, and your average proximity to the middle part of the target, which is really cool. Not only that, the range looks a thousand times better. And if you touch that, you're gonna get a little bit more extra data in there, but we'll get into some of those features in a minute. Let's hit some pitching wedges, let's warm up. Then we're gonna get on the course. We're gonna play Augusta in the short par three course. Then I'm gonna show you my local course on one of them that's still a little bit flat. So let's do it. Pitching wedge in hand, Rapsodo MLM2 Pro turned on. 
I am as stiff as a board with every excuse under the sun. Let's go. That hit exactly where I was wanting to hit it. And that looks pretty good. We're on the green target, it's pretty much on my number. All right, so first shots, let's take a look at some of the stats. Total shots hit one, target hit, so that's gonna show me my average proximity. If I go back, it's gonna give me a little bit of a heat map there as well. And if I go in here, this is where I can change the distances. I can add grid lines or I can take them away. So the grid lines are gonna show me the target. I can see the camera settings. So I've got ball flight at the moment. I can also have stationary. So the last shot that I just hit, which I'll show you again now, was the ball flight shot. Um, let's just go stationary and hit another one. That was nice too. So this one is now gonna show you a stationary ball flight. So you're gonna see pretty much a standard look to it. And we have, in terms of stats, we have pretty good numbers. What's the actual distance? Okay, so distance of 123, total 123. Not sure about that. So it's telling me that I've carried it 113 and it's rolled out to 123 with a pitching wedge. I did hit a slight draw, but not so sure on that. Um, I have hit two of them. Average proximity to hole is five meters. That's pretty good. And let's just hit one more. I'm gonna change that ball flight back because I definitely like following the ball as opposed to the, the static target there. I didn't hit that one as well. And we can see that I blocked it a little bit to the right. It has bounced quite a bit, but I guess it's looking at that as though it's a fairway as opposed to a green. So. We've now hit three shots with a pitching wedge. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change it into a seven iron. And an easy way to do that is all I gotta do is I gotta go to target settings. This goes back to portrait mode, which is a little bit frustrating, but I'm gonna go 150 because I'm not swinging it that well. I feel like I'm a little bit stiff. And I'm gonna go into a seven iron. And now I thought what that would have done is if I changed the target settings, I thought that it would have just allowed me to um, not lose any of that. And if I had to hit that, it could have given me a session average. So that's a little bit disappointing that it doesn't do that. It could probably add that in. So when you change the target, when you change the club, it gives you that data, but it looks like it's just erased my pitching wedges and added the seven iron instead. Oh, that was, that was a bad swing. Yep, that's right. My body is really quite stiff. Oh, two in a row. That one was slightly better, but look at the ball speeds here. 111, I am as stiff as I've ever been in my life. Smash factor 1.23. <laughs> well, we can't, we can't get it the way that we want it all the time. <laughs> That's better. Oh. I don't think it hooked like that though. That's a bit of a mystery, I reckon. That's nice. Body's starting to warm up a bit. There we go. Okay. So we've hit a good one, finally. Target distance was 150. We've got ball speed 119. Took me a little bit to warm up there. Launch angle at 20.7. That's getting better for me. Smash factor 1.33. Spin rate high. Shot type was standard. Side carry was four meters. Very happy with that. And if we swipe across, we can see here, we do have a bit of a pitch map, um, which is kind of everywhere with those five or six shots that I just hit. It would be nice if you could actually check the session stats. Surely you can do that. If you can, throw it in the comments and let me know. I'm not gonna dwell on it too much here because, just dropped my club, because we're, we're going through the video and through the app. Um, but I can't actually see anywhere and I don't really know what this does. Maybe I've just got to change that to let me change it to an eight iron for a second. So I'm changing it to an eight iron and seeing what that does. If my swing has never felt worse in my life. That's a little right as well. There we go, that's nice. Finally, 
finally hitting a good one. Now, it took me a little bit there. I hit quite a few shots, but shanked a couple as well. My swing is not in a great place at the moment, but it is getting there. We're working on it. When you work on your swing, you're gonna unfortunately have some bad sessions. This just happens to be one of them. After hitting a number of extra shots there, just to get some more data, if I click that, you can see that it goes back to one club and then it goes back to all of them. But what it doesn't seem to do, which was disappointing, is when I had the pitching wedge and then I wanted to change the distance and get a different iron, it doesn't give me the pitch map with that on there, which is a bit of a downside. Um, okay, like, I mean, I can, I can change the, the iron, but if I can't change the target distance without wiping everything, let's just try and do it one more time. So if I go to three iron here, it says three hybrid, but let's go to three hybrid. And then let's see if I change the distances this way. Go to 200. Again, that's annoying that doesn't just stay in landscape. Yeah, see, so I've now changed the distances to 200 with a three iron. And it's put the target there, but it's deleted all of the previous shots. So I also can't see anywhere that I can actually go and get my session stats from the session. I can't. I can't see anything so we'll see if it's in the simulations afterwards but it would be handy that if you hit a bad shot you could delete it while you're in the session so it doesn't go to your average numbers and then you've got to go through them all and remember which one was the good ones and which ones were the bad ones but anyway let's hit three iron so this is a new addition to the bag i was actually just allowed to use this online from nev at the t block thanks nev it's nice blocky but i hit it nice 134 ball speed. Same shot, little fairway runner. Three identical shots. I'm pretty happy with all of those, to be honest with you. And let's get one more, see if we can get this one out there a little further. Just hit four identical shots, but I did hit that one a little better. See if I can hit one straighter. It's nice. Actually got through that play for a fade. That's beautiful. Look at that. 140 ball speed. Happy, happy days. The last one to give us a bit of data. Yeah, I didn't quite get that one. Right, so I've hit a number of different clubs there. I am technically in the same session, so I wonder what's going to happen when we're going to leave the session. I can't see any stats at the moment. Um, leave session, uh, end session, because I don't want to come back to it. Right, then if we go back to the start. So this is now going to give me all of my stats, okay? So this is pretty good as well. I'm going to throw this up there. Can I get this in landscape? No, this still doesn't go in landscape. So that would be cool if I added that in landscape. Um, and we've got the averages here up the top, 124 meters average with an eight iron. Okay, so what's going on there? So if we click this, which is a bad shot, which I did unfortunately shank a couple, delete this shot. That one, that one, that one, that one. Okay. Right, so if we delete the the bad shots, we've still got 134. Obviously, like I said, I'm not swinging it that well at the moment. Seven iron average 141. Again, there's some bad shots in there. We can probably delete those. So this is all handy to know that you can go through, you can delete the bad shots and you can keep the good ones, which is obviously what we're trying to do when we're achieving a good uh, average base numbers. So all of that's definitely an improvement. Let's take a look at my best shot of the session, which is this one. So I can go back and I can still see all of this, which is really cool. I can then go and see the ball impact as well. So this is still, uh, can I? Here we go, impact vision. So this is the one that I absolutely smoked. That's going right through there. I can slow that video speed down to 0.25 again. I can replay that and I can see that that is 100% middle and I'm super stoked with that. So 
improvements are on the way for me. Like I said, I'm working on my swing, so we, we gotta take this with a grain of salt. Unfortunately, as a golfer, if you're gonna change the swing, you're gonna have some pretty poor rounds. But let's now get into the core stuff. So, play. Simulation, exact same way, Rapsodo courses. I've got two here that we're gonna go through today. I'm gonna to play Augusta National, the nine hole course, so it's gonna load the course. And I'm gonna show you the undulations and everything that you now get with this. So when you're setting it up, it's gonna ask you for the course, continue. Uh, you can add different players. Now you can play multiplayers, that's really cool. It's gonna ask you for the tees, let's play off the men's. Uh, I've got the Rapsodo ball, Callaway RP T ball. You can also select the holes, okay? So I only wanna play a couple of holes, I'll just play one and nine. Uh, we'll just play those two and then we'll get into um, my home course as well. Uh, terrain penalty, I want that on and I also want the elevation on. Anything outside of nine meters is uh, going to be a three putt. Start simulation. This now goes into landscape, which is super, super cool because that's what everyone has been wanting. We've got a total of 119 meters with a par three and it is uphill. So we'll see how this comes into play. Um, it's asking me to put the ball in the hitting zone, which is pretty much right there. That's always good to have as well. Oh, I didn't hit that well enough. I think that's going to be short. Go. Okay, it bounced up and in there. I'm, I'm going to be keen. I was hoping to actually hit that green. Oh, it's asking me to chip it. All right. I was going to say that I was going to be keen to see exactly what happens when... It hits the green whether it bounds forward like it, it was doing. But now we get to see the short chipping, so that's also good. Eight meters, I've got three meters to the screen, and then you'd hope for a little bit of roll out. Yeah, I mean, I kind of hit that pretty hard. I think that's pretty accurate. I hit the screen harder than I wanted to there. That's gonna be a bogey on the first, but I think in terms of performance and, and what it does, that was pretty accurate. That's pretty cool. Gives you a little bit of a flyover. Let's see the next hole. 127. <laughs> okay, why did I pick this hole? The ninth at Augusta. I think actually never I played this in the foresight. So, 127 and I'm gonna need to hit this pretty good. I did hit that pretty good. It's fading a little, oh go. Oh, lucky, or oh. did get a bit of a bounce on there, didn't it? But I mean, it kind of hit the bank. We're in the circle, so that should be a two putt par. And I mean, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that the graphics are a massive improvement. They're only going to continue to get better. Um, I think visually they're much more pleasing to the eye when you're playing it. It doesn't look as, as 2D-ish, if I can say that. I think it was always 3D, but you know what I mean. And We've got some stats at the end of it, which are pretty cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play my own course, and you can see that it's got the blue tees here as well. So I'm gonna play three holes here. Um, we're hitting it into a net. We're gonna select the holes again. I'm gonna go one, uh, five is a par three, a shorter par three, and I might go 11 because that's a par five. So I've got a par four, a par three, and then a par five. Save, high. We're going to turn the terrain and the elevation on again. Starts, And now this, this is where I kind of said that it's still flat. So, I mean, this first hole technically is pretty flat, but it does have a ridge in the middle just where that bunker is that goes across the fairway. It's a bit of a hill that goes up and over. So it doesn't really have that there, but I can't complain too much about the first hole as it is a flat hole. The other two that I've picked definitely aren't flat. So that's why I picked those. And I'm going to play this as I would off the blues. So 229 is... The target there, I've got a three iron. Let's just hit it like I did before and then we're, we're sweet. That was good. That was a bullet. And that is pretty much exactly where I go when I play this hole. So that's awesome. Judging by the way I've been hitting them and being a little bit stiff, I'm just gonna fly down an eight iron, just a smooth, easy eight with a little bit of a feathered fade. Little feathered fade. Flight that down, what's it doing on the green? Oh, see that bounce. I mean, it's probably not that bad. Hitting a feathered fade like that though, for me with how, how spinny I play it, I would 
like to see that probably stop a bit quicker, but not too bad. That's going to be a two part par. 138, so this is going to be more like a full eight iron. And I can't see any undulation in this yet, still can't. Okay, so they're probably going to update this. I think it's a lot to ask of, of Rapsodo when they're doing the software to get all the local courses with the right undulations as well. You can see that this hole looks very flat, but it actually does go up in elevation quite a bit from the tee box. Um, let's just play it and see. So I've hit the shot there, shoulder's finally starting to loosen up. And is that in birdie territory? No, we're just outside of it, but that's a pretty good shot. I'll take that. Easy par again. All right, so final hole, I ducked out there to go and see the, to get a tee. And again, we kind of see that this is flat, which is a little, little disappointing, not gonna lie. Um, I would have liked to have seen that. Actually, I might, I might have to, three iron this one because I've moved it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hit a three iron on this bad boy. So this hole as well, what actually happens is you do get an uphill and then it goes downhill at about that 220 sort of mark. So it doesn't have the undulation here as yet. Oh no, that's terrible. That is terrible. Okay. <laughs> Cause you had a bad day, breaking one down. You know what, we can still make birdie. Let's go. <clears throat> That's good. From your worst shot to your best. Oh. Maybe not quite. All right, I guess we'll just keep this, keep this club in hand. And that wasn't a good one. But it was straight. Go. The graphics are much better. So the graphics are good, definitely give it that. We need to get this into that little circle. Okay. Don't know about that one, but we've got 28 meters coming back. <laughs> okay. No, that didn't go 45 meters. Okay. The chipping, short chipping has always been tough, um, to be honest with any of them, 17. And we got that in, so that's going to give me a double bogey, I think. Um, pretty poorly played hole in the end, but that's okay, should have been better off the tee. And we're going to finish it two over, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Two out of three greens in reg, probably one of the easiest part fives on the course. But in summary, guys, I think that the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro is a very, very good unit, especially with the RPT balls. It's going to measure that side spin. It's going to measure your back spin. It's just gotten a whole lot better. In terms of the update, I definitely give it around about an 8 out of 10 in terms of uh, what they've put into it. Now, software development, if you're not familiar with it, does take a heck of a lot of work to go and update a software. It's not as easy as a lot of people think in the comments section. Um, I actually have worked in SAS and tech before. I understand everything that needs to go into it, but I'm super happy that they've got the landscape mode in there. The driving range is a thousand times better. I just wish during your driving range session, you would be able to see your average stats. I also wish that if you change the club distances, you could see your pitch map, almost like bag mapping, um, which is a feature that it does. So I, I, I just wish that they would be able to do that in the same session without having to go back and then and then add it in later. Um, and then in terms of the course play, again, a heck of a lot better. Well done, Rap Soto. It doesn't have all of the undulations and the elevation for every course, but the ones that it does that it does have, the famous ones, it, it's really, really good. So a massive, massive improvement for the MLM2 Pro. If you're thinking about purchasing one of these, like I said, make sure you check out 24 seven golf. Um, they have a whole range of packages, indoor packages, outdoor packages. There's even a package for $2,000. It's an outdoor package. Okay. It's $2,000 Australian. Use my code DMAX200. I've got videos on that as well. I'll link that in the description and I'll see you guys on the next video. If you haven't liked this video as well, make sure you do that because it really helps the algorithm and it helps me and it gets this video out to more people. So, Thanks guys, see you on the next video and have a good weekend and a very safe Christmas. Cheers.